All right, welcome back everyone. If you followed me so far, then in the last couple of episodes, we had a look at HTTP and the HTTP protocol and how that kind of serves as the bedrock for what we are going to learn next. Now, before we start, I want to stress that this is a course that is laid out in order. So if you haven't watched those episodes, please go back to my channel and, and watch those to get a better understanding for what we are going to learn next. To recap those two episodes, then we learned that HTTP is basically just text messages that are being sent back and forth between a browser, for instance, and a web server. So the browser handles creating the HTTP request for you and sends it off to the server. And the server is the entity that actually takes the request, handles it and returns an HTTP response. Now, in my mind, a server is just a computer that's configured to listen for HTTP messages. And it reads those messages and it tries to find whatever resource we are requesting. So I want to go a little bit into detail here and look at this from my computer's perspective, because we can turn any computer into a web server. So let's take a look at how we can do that. I'm going to open up my command line tool here. If you're not familiar with the command line, it's a tool that can be used to navigate your file system. So if you have something like Finder uh, or something similar on Windows computer, you can basically navigate your file system a little bit faster by using the command line. So here in Finder, I'm at a folder called web server and inside of my command line I am in this same folder so I'm going to start up a web server here and to do that I'm going to use something called simple HTTP server which is a Python program and you just specify that we want to run this simple HTTP server script on port 8000. If you don't have Python or simple HTTP server installed, you can Google that online and easily get started setting that up. Um, I won't show you how to do that because I want to keep this short and sweet, but you can find that out on your own and post the video if you need to. But I am going to start this server right here. So, now we can see that the server is listening on 0000, 0, 0, 0 on port 8000. So basically that means it's listening on all interfaces, all network interfaces on port 8000. So if we go to our browser and we open up localhost colon 8000, we now get this directory listing. So the web server is now listing all of the files that we have in our file system. So if we go and look at in our finder, we can see that inside of the web server folder, we have this folder called test. We have this image called beach and we have this hello.txt file. And in the command line, if we look at the logging output from this server, we see that we had a get request to the slash uh, or the root of the web server. So it tried to get whatever's at the root and it came up with this directory listing. And we can see in the directory listing that it matches what we have in our file system. So if we try to open one of these files in the browser, for example, this uh, image here, then uh, it opens that image. 
but if we go back to our command line then we can see that we have now received a get request to slash beach dot jpeg so it tried to retrieve an image that exists relative to the root of the web server and as we can see over here it says 200 which is the status code for OK and in our browser we can see that we have the image open so it was a successful request the browser sent a request to the web server the web server said okay I have this get request it's looking at an image called beach.jpg relative to my root and it goes let me see if I can try to find that and it found it and it retrieved uh, sorry it sent back a response to the web browser that the status was okay we found the image and here it is so if we go back to our browser and check out the directory listing again and we head into this test folder we can see that uh, we have a file here called test01.txt and if we open that we can see the contents of that file and in our command line we can see that we tried to or we receive the get request at this path so relative to the root in the directory test we're trying to retrieve test underscore zero one dot text so again the web server received the request it went alright I have to try to get this file at this location and the files there so it says okay I found the file let me return it for you and it sends back the HTTP response. So what would happen if we try to request a file that doesn't exist in the file system? Well, it's going to fail in some kind of manner, right? So let's try that out. If we go to our browser and we try to get failure.txt. Well, now we get an error response and it says error code 404 file not found and the explanation says nothing matches the given URI so if we go to our terminal we get the same status messages and that's because this resource doesn't exist so the browser tried to request a resource called failure.txt now we know if we look in our finder there is no such file in the web server directory so we received the request that we didn't know how to handle or how to respond to because the file isn't there so the browser sent the request to the web server and the web server went well I don't have this file so I can't accommodate your request and then sent a HTTP response back saying sorry couldn't find it and the status code is 404 which is the status code for file not found so that's it for servers really it's just a computer that's configured to respond to HTTP requests and try to match those requests with resources on the server so I'm going to leave it there for now and then hopefully we can go a little bit more into depth in this topic later but uh, I think this serves as a good start to understanding servers and how it ties together with HTTP and um, yeah I hope you found this useful and I'll see you in the next video.